Hi there smart monkeys and welcome to my channel. Those of you who've been here before, welcome back. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into maths masters and I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays so hit the subscribe button if you want to know when I post any new videos. So in this video I'm going to be looking at the topic models and this is a requested video so I am going to sort of try and just explain this concept and then hopefully you guys can feel a little bit more confident when you approach your prelim and your final exams. Right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, great trials. So we are doing models, right? And you know, I like to start right at the beginning right and understand what is this model section actually about so essentially the model section really just looks at a combination between what you've learned in measurement what you've learned in finance that has to do with cost and essentially putting smaller things into bigger things right so fitting into um fitting into spaces this is not supposed to say into a spaces but it's supposed to say spaces please forgive me all right, so I'm going to show you by just using an example the gist of this model section, right? So let's say we have this storage box with these dimensions, right? And we have another box, which let's say this is a juice box, right? And we would like to package this juice box into the storage box so that we can actually deliver it to a store. This is the dimensions of the juice box. This is the dimensions of the storage box. And we want to work out how many of the juice boxes can actually fit in the storage boxes. So how many of these can actually fit in the storage box? Right? So that would be sort of a typical model type question. Right? And the way you would do that is essentially you will look at this and you will see, okay, if this is going to go into the storage box, first I need to find out how many can I pack next to each other going down this way, right? And the way you would find that out is you would take the width of the box, of the storage box, and divide it by the width of the juice box, right? So essentially you would look like this. You'll say 120 centimeters divided by 8 centimeters which gives us 15 boxes so what we've just calculated is how many boxes we can actually put next to each other in the width of this that can actually fit in this box right so that's 15 boxes i took this width and i divided by the width of the box there then we, what we want to know is really how many can actually fit in the breadth of this Okay, so in other words, how many can I pack behind this box to find out at the bottom, right, right behind each other, how many can actually fit in the storage box? So the way you would do that is you would calculate the 20, right, which is the width of this, and divided by the width of the juice box. So essentially it's the 20 divided by the 5, so four boxes can be packed next to each other. So already at the base of this box, grade 12, I have... 15 boxes can, that can be stored this way and then if I look at this I can have four boxes then behind each other right so right at the bottom I've got 15 boxes this way and then I've actually got four rows of 15 boxes that can fit in the storage box right now we want to see okay can we actually fit boxes on top of each other right so this is 32 centimeters and the height of the box is 15. So essentially, if I had to say 32 divided by 15, I'll get 2.13, which means I can only, I can, I have to round this off because essentially then only two boxes can actually fit on top of each other, right? So now the question is how many of these juice boxes can actually fit in this storage box? So you're going to have 15 across this way, you're going to have four rows of 15 but then you're also going to have two rows stacked on top of each other right so the way you would do this to find the total boxes is literally just take all your answers and multiply it by each other so you will have 15 multiplied by the 4 
multiplied by the two that sits on top of each other. So in this storage box, I can fit a total of 120 boxes. Now that's how you would do these calculations. But it's important for you to understand, grade 12, that a lot of people, what they do is they will use, they will calculate the volume of the storage box. And then they will calculate the volume of the juice box. And they'll say the one divided by the other. The problem with that method is if you notice here, what the answer will give you, it will assume as if you can literally use all small spaces at the top and actually fit a box in there, which you can't do. So you can't use this, that method. When you are calculating model, when you are working with models, right, and you are calculating what can fit into something else, you have to do it the width, breadth, and height way in order for you to get the correct answer. Okay, so this is just sort of how to get you, this was just used to get you to understand the section. Now I'm going to actually use an exam question where we're going to be using a combination of measurement costs and fitting into space. Okay, so let's have a look at the example. A vet shop sells cans of dog food, which they put on display for customers on a shelf as shown below. So this is the shelf where they put the can dog food, right? The owner of the shop wants to fill the shelf up once a month. So wants this full every single month. If one can of dog food costs 26 Rand 99, how much will it cost to fill this shelf monthly? Assume all get sold every month. All right, so let's decipher and make sure we understand the question because we always try and understand the question first before we attempt to answer the question. So this is the can of dog food. They give us the radius at 35 millimeters and they give us the height. Sorry, this arrow was supposed to be there. And this is 80 millimeters, right? Then they give us the dimensions of the shelf, which is 150 centimeters wide. The breadth is 10 centimeters. And then each section is 16 centimeters in height. Now we have to find out how many of this cans can actually fit into one shelf. And because the shelves are exactly the same, we're going to just have to calculate how much can fit in one shelf and then just multiply by four to find out how much can actually fit in this entire space. Okay, so let's look at how we would do this. Firstly, when we're dealing with a measurement uh, question, we are always making sure that all of our measurements is in the same unit. So in this case, our shelf is measurements are in centimeters and our dog food measurements, can measurements are in millimeters, right? I'm going to change this arrow so that it doesn't confuse you. <laughs> All right, um, that's the height. All right, so <clears throat> if I look at this now, right, we've got this can and we want to sort of pack this there, but we want to get them in the same unit. So because the bookshelf, or let's, yeah, sorry, it's not really a bookshelf, it looks like a bookshelf, but let's say the shelf has got most of the measurements in centimeters or all of its measurements, and it's got more measurements essentially than the dog food. I'm going to change all of it to centimeters. Now, obviously, if this was an exam questions, a question, then they generally give you the unit that they want you to answer it in. And if they don't give the unit, you can literally just look at what is the unit that most of the values and you, um, the lengths are in, and then just convert all the others to that unit. Okay. So now the first step is we're going to change and convert the dog food units to centimeters. So how do we do that? We're going to say the radius, which is 35 millimeters, divided by 10 will give me 3.5 centimeters. So the radius, so from the center of the scan to the circumference, right, is 3.5 centimeters. Right, then we also have the height that's in millimeters. So we're going to convert the height, and that's going to be 80 divided by 10, and it will give us 8 centimeters. All right, so we've now converted. Everything is in the same units. So what do we want to do next? Now next, we're going to actually find out if we're going to pack this can here. Do you see that we need to know what's the entire width of this can? And this entire width of the can is actually the diameter, which means it's two, two parts of this radius next to each other. 
So if I want to calculate the diameter, I'm literally just going to take the radius in centimeters, which is 3.5, multiplied by 2. So I know that the total width of a can is 7 centimeters. Now I actually have all the information that I need in order to answer the question. So we're going to do it very similar to how we did with the box. So if I look at the shelf, you see the total width here is 10 centimeters, right? And I want to work out, okay, how much cans next to each other, sorry, the total width is 150 centimeters. So it's this way, right? So if I have 150 centimeters, how many cans can actually fit next to each other? So I'm going to take the 150 and divide it by the width of the can, which is the diameter. So the calculation will then be 150 centimeters divided by the 7 centimeters, and I will end up with 21.42. Rounded, rounding that down, obviously, because 22 cans won't fit, right? So this has to be rounded down to the context of the question. So this will be 21 cans. So I can actually stack 21 cans next to each other on one shelf right now we want to see okay fine how much can actually fit in the breadth so it's this here right so if i notice see from the front part to the back part here this is 10 centimeters and again from the front part to the back part of the circle is going to be exactly the same as as it was this way because from through the center, from one side of the circumference, through the center to the other side, will always be the diameter. So the width this way and the width that way is exactly the same. So ideally, if I have 10 centimeters divided again by the 7, right, because that's the also sort of the breadth of the can, and I end up with 1.42, which means only one set of, can, can, set of cans can actually fit. Um, yeah, I can't put any cans in front of the other can, okay? So in this case here. Now, I know I can fit 21 cans next to each other and only one row, but now let's see how many cans we can actually fit on top of each other, right? So in height, I've got 16 centimeters, and here I worked out the height is eight centimeters. So I can then fit two cans on top of each other. So think about this. I have 21 cans this way, and two cans can fit on top of each other. So that means I'm going to have a row of 21. I'm going to have a row of 21 there. And then exactly the same for each of these. Right? So how do I then calculate the total amount of cans? On one shelf, I just say the 21, which is that, this way, times 1. You don't have to include the 1. I'm just showing you that 1 fits. There's only 1. There's not, the, Two cans can't fit in front of each other. Multiply by 2 because two cans can fit on top of each other. So in one shelf, I can have a total of 42 cans, because I have a row of 21 and a row of 21 on top of each other. But now I've got four compartments, right? So I'm, in order to find the total cans, I'm going to take the comp how many can fit in one compartment and multiply it by four. So in total, I have 168 cans. So if this owner needs to buy 160 cans every single month, what would that total cost be? So in the question it says one can is 26 rand 99. So that means I will say 168 multiplied by 26.99 and the owner will have to pay 4,534 and 32 cents every single month if he wants to fill the shelf, assuming that it get, all gets sold every single month. Okay. So do you see that ideally the whole section is really about making sure you understand measurements, right? And that you also understand the costs that go with measurement and really just trying to make sense of how smaller things fit into larger things. All right, so that's your video on models. All right, great fellas, there's that video. I hope that you understand this a little bit better. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or recommendations for future videos, add it in the comment section. And then, yeah, I will then see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.